Welcome back everybody. So we just finished up a rate my base on NASM and our R blaster just finished unlocking. So now we have level one R blasters. And we're gonna do another rate my base. And this one is gonna be for Jordan the Great 2. So crazy, there's a lot of Jordan the Greats out there, so he had to be Jordan the Great number two. Pretty insane. Uh, but yeah, like I said there's about a million people that have downloaded this already and made a name. Um, so we are fighting Jordan the Great 2. He has five stars already, which is uh, pretty insane to win the fifth tournament. His base here, everything's very close and bunched up to your troops, uh, which I don't like. It's all right around here. I prefer having the things up in here because then that means you're closer to your you know, defensive troops, whereas down here you're setting up your base close to all the offensive troops, so it's easier for them to, you know, come up and crush you. They don't have to walk as far, which takes time, and time is the biggest factor that you have to worry about in the fights. So that's the first thing I noticed that I, I don't really like. Um, a lot of Gargoyle Towers, and Fireball Towers as well, so pretty good setup there. It doesn't show any arrow towers over here, which is going to be interesting uh, to see, you know, how much damage he'll be able to do. He does have a lot of ranged troops, which I like having a lot of art blasters. Unfortunately for him, I think the sword rain will be able to kill them since it is level five. So I think that won't really matter in this fight. Um, but overall, I like his troop setup. I like having a lot of art blasters. Um, his pathway is fairly decent. Um, I would, you know, if you're going to keep it exactly how it is like this, I would prefer to make this more of a straight line and then use these pathways to extend this more this way or more this way. Uh, so have one longer path. But we'll see how things go. Um, I have a feeling that we'll be able to probably defeat this base. Mm -hmm. Because he is a low trophy count. He is only 1900. So I have a feeling that we're going to be able to defeat this base. Um, his first wave of troops will be very interesting to see. And his second wave of troops. We should probably be able to kill two waves of troops with one sword rain. We'll be right about here. Uh, his first wave will be coming up and his second wave will be coming up. And so we'll be able to kill both of them with one sword rain. Which that's a bad base design. And you'll see what I'm talking about in there. Um, maybe not, but most likely when you have something very close bunched together like this, you're going to have two waves of troops right next to each other, and then one sword rain spell will be able to kill out all the ranged troops. Um, so here we're going to bring out a couple couple knights in the beginning uh, to help with the first wave of troops, and then we'll bring out a cannon or two, because we don't want the cannons to come out too early, and then if these guys you know, don't get killed for some reason by the sword rain, they start killing off my cannons. You want to make sure your cannons are protected. So I'm going to go like this. Um, I will throw in the Arb Blaster on the side here, just for uh, for the heck of it. We won't really be needing him, I don't think. It will just be cannons and knights. So we're going to see on the side. Um, these two barricades are very interestingly placed, because now you can burn both of them. Um, right by just touching the corner. Uh, I don't really like that setup. We'll see how things go. But overall, uh, it looks to me this looks like a fairly easy base to uh, just you know rush through and beat with you know knights, cannons. You do need the sword rain to be fairly strong. But we're gonna see how things go. As you can see, the first batch. So I guess we can only kill one, uh, one wave of troops. The second one hasn't spawned close to close enough to us yet. Um, so that's a plus for him. Need to take out the uh, gargoyle tower over here because the cannons won't actually. The cannons won't actually get over here because they're going to be stuck on the spikes. So my hero needs to take out the Gargoyle Tower. And otherwise, it's just going to burn off all of the knights. Uh, so now coming up over here, 
the spikes should be pretty much damaged. I think they took out one, and then the pyromancers and stuff killed my cannon. So I'm going to have to bring up another cannon. And there, I should have actually done that more up towards the spikes, so I would have been able to hit the spikes in the corner. Um, because you always want to try and hit things in the corner. Sometimes you, you know, you can't, you have too much going on, and you're just like, okay, I'm going to use it. So I saved my hammer strike there, and use it up here, kill these guys. So all in all, his base, it has been fairly well, uh, fairly well designed. You know, I didn't like it looking at the overview of it, but um, going in here and fighting it, it actually works really well together. He has towers set up in a good formation where they they work well with each other. Um, you know, pretty much everything is being utilized fairly good. And like I said, if someone didn't have a high level sword brain, he would be doing extremely well with his uh, his ranged troops. His troop setup is really good. Definitely like that. Um, the only issue that you know he's having against me is because I'm a higher level player. I have a higher level sword brain. I'm able to kill all his ranged troops in one hit. And you can see it's getting close, um, 20 seconds or so left. So he did a fairly good job for his level and his, you know, pretty much his level and everything. So he did really well. Uh, we did defeat his base. Can't really fault him for me being overpowered and fighting him with a level 5 sword rain. Um, but, like, his layout was pretty good when we actually went in and fought it. So we're going to go back and, and look at everything. Good placement of the Gargoyle Towers. They definitely took out all the knights uh, like they were supposed to. So, Jordan the Great. So you can see his base again. And then so he had um, one Gargoyle Tower over here, one Gargoyle Tower over here. Um, very good placement because the cannons, they got stuck on these spikes. And so as your hero comes over, your hero has to kill the Gargoyle Towers himself because the knights, they just pretty much get disintegrated to the Gargoyle Towers in the lava. Um, and the cannons are stuck over here, so your hero is stuck fighting the Gargoyle Towers over here. And these Pyromancers and our blasters are able to kill the cannon. So my cannon was only able, I bring two cannons out, I believe. They were only able to kill one spikes and they both died which is not very good, a waste of 10 troops. Um, I would definitely make this a little bit longer if you could take this curve and make this, you know, one, two, make it like that, make it longer. So then put all his stuff over here if he has the runes taken out and he can do that. That would make it very, very good because then your cans would get stuck over here, and they'd be working on these guys, and they'd be getting destroyed by the pyromancers and the R blasters, and so the cans would be doing very, very little damage. Your hero would be stuck way over here, so he can't support your cannons, and he would be taking out the gargoyle towers um, because you know his all the knights are going to die unless you take out the gargoyle towers. The knights are extremely weak against those towers, so if he mushed or moved the 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 tower like line move the pathway over there it would be a lot better and he'd have a lot more ground to cover so that's what I would do if he has the ability to move this down and to kind of just make this a straight line and then move that down that would greatly help his base um, the only problem with that like I said you have to make sure that the runes are gone and those runes you don't know where they are you know and they do cost a lot of gems to get rid of so, you know, that could be an issue. But if you could even just move down one space and then maybe open it up more over here, it would definitely help. Overall, he's got a really, really good base, like I said, for his level and for he, where he's currently at. Um, his troops, like I said, if someone didn't have a high-level sword rain, they would probably be able to stay alive and do a lot of damage. And we barely beat his base uh, without using, you know, scrolls or anything. It was down to, like, 10 seconds left. So, all in all... A very very good base thing. I thought it wasn't going to be that tough, uh, but his towers all work extremely well together. The only downside with having towers bunched up so much like that is that the scroll, if you use an apocalypse scroll, they can take down everything over here in one scroll. Um, but you know it's give and take. His base is 
you know, is fairly good. Um, you know, just keep working on upgrading, you know, towers here and there. Um, great job of placement of things. The bomb towers, I didn't really notice. You might want to swap the bomb towers out with the arrow towers because the bomb towers are good against large groups of enemies and when your hero is like distracted. But in this situation, the hero was taking care of the gargoyle towers and the gargoyle towers are doing a very good job of getting rid of all the um, all the knights. So the bomb towers are kind of underutilized. They weren't really being able to do anything. And I don't even really remember seeing too many bombs on the ground. And you know I didn't even have to bother really kicking them. So maybe swapping the uh, bomb towers out with some arrow towers instead. And the same placement would also help and start pecking away at the hero. Because um, those do actually do a decent amount of damage. And they prevent the hero from regenerating. So those are the things I would do. Um, you know, I do have to knock it down a little bit because I did get to the castle gate. I did defeat the base. Um, so my rating you know, is going to be a little generous because, like I said, I do have a feeling that it is, uh, you know, he is a little bit lower level player. He's only 1,900 trophies. Um, so, you know, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10 because, like I said, his towers did work very well together. Um, I didn't see really issues there. His troop formation is good. So, you know, you can't really knock him for just not, you know, having upgraded troops, having, you know, it's just spending more time to level up everything. We're, you know, dissecting his base. And his base layout is fairly good, um, especially for this range, especially for, you know, the level he's currently at. Having, you know, this setup is a very good setup, and most people won't be able to get through it, because um, like I said, most people aren't as, you know, high-level spells or, you know, as effective as a raider as I am. Um, so all in all, like I said, a 6 out of 10. Um, you know, just got to keep working on upgrading things, and if you can, moving this making it a little bit further I think would be a great improvement on his base uh, but overall I do like his base actually um, you know I do wish I had an attack uh, account that was around this trophy level that I could actually test it out with someone more of like you know in the level 45 48 uh, king level so I could test a you know pretty much a fair even match and then that way to be able to get a better rating scale on this one um, so like I said so I'm going with a 6 out of 10 mainly because I did defeat his castle gate. Um, like I said, although my spells are, you know, a lot powerful, a lot more powerful than they should be. So, but overall, I like the base. Good job, Jordan. And, uh, you know, keep leveling things up.